everyone, welcome back to One Cent Sports Cards YouTube channel. Today I am excited to be doing a brand new set review, and this time it is for one of Topps' biggest releases of the year. It is 2020 Topps Chrome. We are going to dive into autos, we are going to dive into the checklist, all the different rookies you can get and the brand new relics. We're even going to tell you about the different break teams you should be buying into. So without further ado, let's dive right in to our 2020 Topps Chrome set guide and review. Okay, so here it is. It is the 2020 Topps Chrome Set Guide and Review. Now, what we're looking to get to by the end of this review is my exclusive one cent sensational set ranking. That is a ranking where we take the Topps Chrome set, break it down and break it down into 10 different categories. And out of those categories, you can get a one to 10 score. We're gonna add all of those 10 scores up, which is going to give us our sensational set ranking, which allows us to see how good this set is overall and allows us to compare this set to all of the other sets that have been released in the 2020 year. So as we get into the set guide and review, here's the things we're going to cover off on today. First, the set highlights. Uh, we're gonna get into the different buying formats. There's plenty of different ones for Topps Chrome. We'll get into the key cards that you should be collecting for this. We're gonna get into the inserts, the relics, and the autos. And yes, you heard that right. There is relics in Topps Chrome 2020. I'm so excited about it. I'm also gonna tell you what teams you should be targeting and breaks. We'll get into who should be collecting this, who shouldn't be collecting, what types of collectors um, should be going after this stuff and then we'll uh, talk about the set positives the, the set negatives and that will bring us to our one cent sensational set rating where we will give this its final score to see how good tops chrome is in regards to all of the 2020 sets and then we will show you all of the 2020 set rankings to date to see where tops chrome falls in regards to all of those other sets so let's hop right in and get into the set highlights first thing to know about tops chrome it is a chrome set with a heavy 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 focus on rookies and on card autos it is in its 25th year of production it started way back in 1996 um, it is the chrome version of the 2000 uh, that should say 2020 flagship set not the 2002 it is the 2020 flagship set and it has 200 base cards in the checklist and it features a ton of rookies and stars from the series one and series two flagship sets now most of the stars are going to be your younger stars but there are a few veterans that are in there as well most of the autos are going to be on card autos which is fantastic i'm very excited about another thing in this set there are a large number of base set image variations and each of those image variations actually do come with a five color rainbow parallel there are also base set super short prints i believe that's six or seven cards we'll get into that later um and one of the most exciting things about the 2020 Topps Chrome set is that there are retro rookie Chrome relic cards included in the hobby format. You can't get them in retail. They're only going to be available in hobby. But what those are, are exclusive Chrome variations of iconic rookie cards with swatches included so think back to series one when they did the uh rookie retrospective it's going to be rookie cards just like that but these are even going to include swatches so really excited about that relic set and keep in mind you can't talk about tops chrome without talking about the rainbow parallel there are 19 different colors you can collect in the parallel so a very difficult rainbow to complete and there is also a very cool um, all-time rookie cup team auto subset that features stars and hall of famers in this set so we mentioned the parallels like i said you can't talk about tops chrome without talking about parallels so let's get into what those are first of all we'll get into the base set refractor parallels you've got refractors which are going to be one in three packs that's hobby uh prism which are one in six packs the negative refractor is back the sepia is back that's going to be in the retail value boxes or blaster boxes as some people call them the x fractor there will be mega boxes coming out in 2020 as well so the x fractor is back the pink is 
is back, which is in the value packs for retail. We've got purple, blue, green, green wave, blue wave, gold, gold wave. And as we continue on, we get to the ultra rare, rare ones where we've got orange, red, super fractors, printing plates. And like I mentioned earlier, there are image variation parallels in the base set as well, where you get a five color rainbow. So what are the different formats you can buy? And we'll start with hobby. First of all, you can get a hobby box that is going, going to include 24 packs, four cards per pack. So you get 96 total cards. Right now, these boxes are going for about 300 bucks. So your cost per card on that is $3.13. But what you get for that is two on-card autos, four prism refractors, and eight refractors guaranteed in every box. Then you also have the Jumbo HTA box that has 12 packs, 13 cards per pack. So you get 156 total cards. Those are going for about 450 over on Blowout right now. You might be able to get some cheaper on eBay, but buy at your own risk on eBay. Your cost per card comes down a little bit on the Jumbo box to $2.88, and you are guaranteed to get five on-card autos and eight refractors. Now, you'll notice what's missing out of there are the four prism refractors, which may explain the fact, um, or it may explain the uh, lower cost per card price. Then we have retail, tons of different retail options. Gonna to be tough to find though with all the flippers. Uh, first thing we'll cover off on the blaster box. Gonna be just like last year, seven packs, uh, four cards per pack, plus one four card bonus pack. That's gonna have 32 total cards. Gonna to cost you 20 bucks, cost per card, all the way down to 63 cents. And you do get that bonus pack, which has four sepia refractor parallels. Then the mega box will also be coming. The mega box, just like last year, 10 packs, four cards per packs, plus you get two five card bonus packs. So 50 total cards, gonna cost you, it's really 39.99, but we'll call it 40 bucks. Cost per card on that is 80 cents and you do get 10 X-Fractor parallels. You also get the value pack, which I think is kind of maybe the one thing if I'm buying retail that I'd be looking at. You get three packs in that plus one five card bonus pack. So 17 total cards going to cost you around 10 bucks. So your cost per card on that all the way down to 59 cents. And you do get the five pink refractor parallels. They have a hanger box this year, guys. It's going to be five packs plus one five card bonus pack. So 25 total cards. That's going to cost you right around 10, maybe 11 bucks, depending on where you're, uh, on where you're shopping. Cost per card is going to be all the way down to 40 cents on that. It's your lowest cost per card that you can get. Um, and what you do get out of that, you don't get any of the refractor parallels, but you do get five tops update preview cards. So you're going to get some five. Uh, so you'll get some tops update that you can find in that hanger pack. Then you also get the National Baseball Card Day hanger. National Baseball Card is this Saturday, August 8th, and you will get five packs out of that, basically just like the hanger pack. The difference is, is you will get five National Baseball Card Day cards out of that box. So if you like the National Baseball Card cards, I'd definitely be looking for those. So what are the key cards this year in the Topps Chrome set? First of all, we'll cover off on the base ones. Uh, card number 60, Luis Robert, going to be on fire, especially with how hot he has started off in the 2020 season. Uh, Gavin Lux has uh, got a rookie card in there. You've got the Bo Bichette, and you've got Kai Lewis. Uh, I, I obviously didn't spell check this too well. It is Kyle Lewis, who, in my opinion, is probably the MVP in the early, early stages of the season. Probably won't end up that way, but started off just white hot, out of the uh out of the gates for seattle so we've got the kyle lewis rookie card and of course the jordan alvarez now a lot of these people also have image variations that are in the base set as well as we get into the parallels the autos sps relics inserts um you've got the image variation cards just mentioned them and some of the stars in there are huge you've got trout soto acuna um you've got bachette rover all sorts of different ones jordan's in there and you also have super short print image variations and Derek Jeter is actually included in that one. There is a Jackie Robinson as well. So very, very tough to pull, but very, very cool short, uh, super short print image variations. 
And the dual rookie autos are back for another year. Those are all going to be numbered to 25. And maybe one of the most exciting things about the Topps Chrome set this year, you have the rookie retro relics. And again, I have a spelling error in there. Um, and the auto relics. So not only will some of these uh, relics come off as non-autos, but there is a chance to pull autos out of there as well. Just really, really cool idea that Topps came up with for Topps Chrome this year. And you also have the Topps All-Time Rookie Cup Team Autos. Very cool looking cards. We'll see those in just a minute. And you also have the insert, which is the Decades of Dominance die cut. Those, you saw a lot of those in top series one and series two, but those are going to land in about one in 24 packs in the hobby format. So you're only going to get about one per box on those. So a little bit of a tougher pull. Um, so those should carry some value. And then the other thing that's new for this year, what you're going to find is uh, Topps Update, Topps Gallery, and Topps Fire Preview inserts in a lot of these cards. Probably we'll find those in retail as well as hobby. So let's get into what these insert sets are. Pretty straightforward, not a lot of new ones, but a couple newcomers for 2020. Uh, we do have the 1985 Topps Baseball, so we've got the 1985 design back. Um, it's got five parallel rainbow that you can pull out of those you've got the decades of dominance which you see over there to the right um, again you've got a four parallel rainbow on those 15 cards freshman flash is back so that's all going to be your rookies um, with an insert you've got 15 cards in that set again five parallel rainbow the future stars is also back which has 20 cards with a five parallel rainbow as well more inserts that you can get you've got the tops fire preview that's going to have nine cards the tops gallery preview with 10 cards and finally the tops update preview which has eight cards so you should probably find those in retail uh, a little bit more than you would in hobby but i wouldn't be surprised to find them in hobby as well and new for 2020 we have a relic set which i'm really excited about love that there is actually some chrome cards with some relics it's kind of a rare thing that you see these days and what that is it is called the rook uh, the retro rookie chrome relics and there are 35 different ones so it is chrome versions of rookie cards and they include swatches so as you can see the willie maze off there to the left really cool that it's a chrome design and you are able to get a four parallel rainbow out of those sets as well so i would love to pull some of those i think it's a really neat set or subset for tops chrome so let's get into the important part we've got the autographs First of all, the 1985 Topps Baseball autograph, so the uh, the retro design back to 1985 is back. You've got 17 cards in that set, and you can get a four parallel rainbow out of that. You've got the dual autographs. Those are all going to be numbered to 25, but you can't even get parallels in that of red and super fractor. Freshman Flash is back. That's got 18 cards in it with a four color parallel rainbow and future stars which you see off to the right so those are going to be your young stars maybe not rookie cards but definitely young stars would be great to pull that vladimir guerrero you're seeing off to the right there with parallel uh color rainbow of four colors as well 18 cards in that set then we have the retro rookie chrome relic autograph so those would be really cool where you get the rookie card plus the swatch plus the uh plus the um auto on there you've got 18 cards in that set and with the autos you're going to see most out of this set are going to be the rookie autographs tops chrome is known for rookie autographs you will pull a ton of them out of the hobby boxes um and the hobby hta jumbo boxes so they have a full color rainbow i'm not going to go off into what all those are but if you hit pause on this you can kind of see the difference between rainbow what you get in rainbow versus hobby and hobby jumbo um and then there is the tops all-time rookie cup team now that is going to include autos from some hall of famers some retired stars it's going to be it's going to include some younger stars i think aaron judge has a card in there so there's 14 cards in that and it's got a four color parallel rainbow as well so knowing all of this pretty straightforward set in regards to the inserts and the autographs and whatnot so the question becomes okay well which teams since there's going to be a ton of people breaking this stuff which teams should you be buying into 
And so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna start off with five teams that I think are really good, um, and then I'm gonna give you one sleeper team at the end. The first team that I don't think is gonna even be uh, one of the top five most expensive teams that you would buy out of this, so maybe a little bit of a sleeper here, the Chicago Cubs. Surprisingly, they have uh, 12 autos in this set. There are two of the relics, and there are eight base cards and two image variation cards. So the Cubs, if you can get them at the right price, definitely hop on that if you were looking for autos. The Astros have a ton of base cards. They've got nine base cards. It's only a 200 card set. So they account for like almost 5% of the entire set. They do have two relics in there and they have a healthy amount of autos with 11 coming in. Then you have the Dodgers. The Dodgers seem to be perennial favorites on break team targets. They're going to be expensive, but if you can get them in a, like a random break, um, definitely a team you want to hold on to. 10 different autos, two relics, 11 base cards, two um, image variation cards and one super short print image variation as well. So the Dodgers got a ton of cards. If you're looking for a ton of cards, looking for some good cards, obviously Gavin Lux, some of their other rookies are going to be in there. Definitely a team you want to keep there. Then you have the Oakland Athletics. The Oakland Athletics have more autographs in this set than any other teams. 14 total autos. Plus, they have 10 base cards. They've got nine different inserts. A lot of those are going to be rel are, are rookies as well. Plus, they've got the two relic cards. So the Oakland A's probably going to be more expensive than you would expect. But if you hit them in a random break, if you can make a trade for them in a random break, definitely, definitely a team that I think is a going to be a little bit under the radar because it's Oakland and definitely a team you would want to target. And then you have the Seattle Mariners. The Seattle Mar Mariners, obviously, you got Kyle Lewis in there. They've got 10 autos as well. They've got eight base cards, um, one image variation, two relics on top of that. Um, so definitely a strong, strong team there. Probably a team you could also trade for in a random team break if you don't hit them. But who is my sleeper? My sleeper team is going to be the Atlanta Braves. Now, they don't have as many autos as some of the other teams that I have listed on here. They have seven, um, but most of those autos are of Ronald Acuna Jr. and Chipper Jones, which is rare for a set like this, which focuses so much on rookies. So definitely, definitely be looking at the Braves um, e e either if you're buying them or if you get them in a team break. They do not have a ton of base cards. Some people are definitely going to be overlooking the Braves on this one. The Braves um, have not been all that great of a team that in 2020 so far in regards to breaking. So definitely with Topps Chrome, there's a little bit to be had if you can hit some fire and get one of those autos. And Acuna Jr., a Chipper Jones, going to pay for itself in spades if you can pull one of those in a break. So definitely be looking at the Atlanta Braves as a sleeper spot. So with all that being said, guys, who should be collecting Topps Chrome this year? Well, first of all, obviously Chrome collectors. Um, it is the most popular chromium set of the year. There it is basically the gold standard for chrome sets. So definitely, definitely, if you like shiny objects, this is a set for you. On top of that, a beautiful parallel rainbow. Uh, like I said, there's 19 and there are exclusive ones for retail versus hobby. So definitely some different formats you can buy it in. A fun rainbow to collect if you're looking for a certain player. Um, and then because Topps Chrome focuses so much on rookies, definitely a set that rookie collectors want to chase. The rookie cards do hold value over time. So it, there is a heavy feature on rookies. So definitely be looking into that if you like collecting rookie cards. And then for retail shoppers, you've got plenty of affordable options to buy into. The trick is going to be actually finding it in stock which I think is going to be a little bit difficult this year. But if you can buy any of those, they all have certain things that are exclusive to the blaster box, to the value box. Um, so definitely some fun retail options. And I'm putting it on here just because it is a chrome set that has a relic. I'm so excited about that. Um, and it is really rare that that happens. This is the first set of 2020 that has actually had that in a chromium option. So if you like relics, I think these are going to be really cool, especially being that they're rookie cards of some of the biggest names in baseball history. 
And finally, I hate to put it on here, guys, but the speculators and the and the card flippers, this is a great set to be looking at. Uh, it holds plenty of long-term value. And some of these cards, if you can get some of those to 25s, to, to, 10, to the red fives, you get those things graded, they will be worth a lot of money. There can be some definite monsters in there. So if you are an investor, if you're into card flipping, this is definitely a set that you should be considering. So who shouldn't be? Because we covered off on a ton of people. I do think that if you're a premium hit chaser, there are low odds on finding low number high value cards. Um, this set does get produced in mass quantity because it's retail and because it's hobby and because of its popularity. It probably gets produced about as much as series one. So the odds of ripping through packs trying to find one of those low numbered cards is going to be a little bit long and you might be better served buying a more high-end premium set think like tops museum something like that um prospect collectors if you like collecting the minor leagues if you're if you're a bowman person there are no prospects that are found in the set so you probably want to stay away from this set and then i'm also going to say that hall of famers uh collectors probably should stay away i did say that there's no hall of famers in this set there are some image variations and there are some of the autos you can pull like the all-time rookie cup ones but for the most part not a lot of hall of famers in here there's better sets to collect if you're looking for hall of fame cards but if you like some of those autos maybe buy them on the secondary market um, instead of investing in a hobby box trying to find them i think your money would be better spent going that route than ripping packs of this stuff the next people who should not be collecting if you are tired i think all of us are a little bit tired of the inflated pricing these boxes especially in the hobby format are going for more than they should. The HTA box is up to $449. Last year at this time when Chrome came out, this stuff was probably about $150. So the prices have been inflated. That's been happening all 2020. A lot of that is due to the speculators. A lot of that is due to increased interest in the hobby itself. But it is definitely a problem that is in the baseball card industry. So if you are tired of that, um, if you can get yourself some retail stuff, get lucky, find some of the stuff there. Great buy into it. But if you are tired of buying into high price boxes that may or may not hold that value once you've opened the packs definitely probably want to stay away from this one as well and then i have retail shoppers in the who should be collecting but i'm also putting them in who shouldn't be collecting and the reason for that is there's going to be a lot of frustration again as you notice you couldn't get this stuff on pre-sale on walmart it's going to be nearly impossible to find this stuff because any of the flippers that find this stuff sitting on the shelves in the store they're going to buy it all up to frustrate everyone else turn around and put it on ebay for double the cost so definitely definitely retail shoppers expect some frustration if you don't want that frustration don't buy into the set and don't buy from the secondary market so here's the positives of tops chrome first of all it is a very popular set one of the most popular sets of the year it is established it's got a 25 year history and there's a ton of hype coming into 2020 because of the 2020 rookie class it is a very proven set um, definitely a set you cannot go wrong with. Um, I also love that they introduced a relic subset. That's that Willie Mays that you see off there to the right. That is fantastic. I, I've been saying it almost all season that the Chrome sets really, really should get some uh, relics in there. So I'm really glad that they did that. Um, and I also think that uh, the design this year for Topps 2020 flagship was really designed for the Topps Chrome set. It's a beautiful design. It's going to look fantastic in Chrome. Uh, the Topps Chrome cards always come with a great card stock, which is fantastic. Um, there is a solid lineup of image variation cards this year as well. So definitely, I think they upped, they upped it a few cards this year, which is fantastic. Those cards are going to hold a lot of value. They're going to be very sought after. So that's really cool. I um, also like that there's exclusive options for retail and hobby. So you've got the orange, you've got the, the relics that you can find in hobby, but you've also got the pink refractors, the sepia, you've got the X fractors. Um, so definitely some nice options that are exclusive to retail and also for hobby. The other thing is there's a very good auto checklist. Um, and when I say that, they 
unlike last year, they've added a few more autos from established stars. Mike Trout has a few autos in there. There's some Hall of Fame autos. They had some of those last year, but they've expanded on that a little bit this year. So I think you're going to see a little less of the rookie autos and maybe a little bit more of a mix of rookie and current stars. Um, so I think the auto checklist is pretty solid this year. So those are the positives. Um, along with a very strong base set checklist. Um, when you think, when you look at all the rookie cards they have in there, it's a strong rookie class. But even when we look past the rookies, um, you've got Vladimir Guerrero's a second year card. They've got a lot of young stars in there. Some of these cards over time could hold definite value. Um, the negatives, let's get into those. First of all, the price for the hobby format, first and foremost, I can't say this enough. The price for the hobby format is really inflated. When you're talking 450 bucks for a set that last year, a box last year would have cost you around 150 to 200. I mean, you were talking about way, infl uh, way inflated prices, a lot of that due to speculation, flipping, and all of that. It is a problem that the hobby has. I don't know how to fix it. I wish I had better ideas, but until the distribution channels decide to stop gouging um, this is the way it's going to be um, the other thing is when we look at the rookie auto checklist the same thing as last year i think they've got 77 different rookie autos in there which if you think about that for the rookies only about 10 of those end up holding value over time because a lot of rookies end up not being successful at the major league uh, level so there is going to be a little bit of filler there but they did do a good job on adding some established stars into that set so i think we're not it won't be as bad as some of the boxes were in 2019. in regards to insert sets there's not a lot that is new this year there's like one uh new insert set uh but you do get freshman flash you do get the future stars those are very established subsets but again would have been nice to maybe see one or two additional um subsets in there all in all not too bad that's a little nitpicky um, the other thing is the flippers and the, uh, and the resellers are going to be incessant on the retail side. Uh, the bots are going to buy everything up on Walmart. The people that are going in and have the relationship with the stock boys at the big box stores, um, they are going to buy all this stuff up quick. So it's going to be hard to find it in retail. Uh, the way to com combat that is to stop buying from flippers on the secondary market. When you see blaster boxes going for 35 to 40 dollars on ebay stay away don't buy them those prices will be bound to come down um, and they will be less likely to go buy them in the future it is a problem um, i talk about it a lot but until everyone else stops buying them at that price then that will solve the problem the other thing is, it, because this is such a popular set, it does have a high production run. It probably has a production run at or near the flagship set, um, which does kind of hurt the value long term a little bit, is there's a lot of cards in circulation. Then finally, there are limited parallel um, cards on the insert set. So there's, as, as you saw earlier, there's only like four parallels. They're all pretty low numbered. So it's going to be kind of hard to find some of the parallels on some of those. But for the most part, um, that is also pretty nitpicky as well. So guys, that brings us to the moment we've all been waiting for. How does Topps Chrome line up this year as a set overall? On the one cent sensational set rate rating, which is one of the most complete rating systems that you will find on YouTube or the internet for any baseball card set. Um, this is how we rated it this year. We've got, like I said, 10 different categories rated on a scale of one to 10. When we talk about appeal, the appeal of this set, there are very few people that stay away from Topps Chrome. I think the appeal is very wide. Um, you've got everyone from uh, you've got everyone from novice collectors to advanced collectors to flippers to um, all sorts of different people that get into this. So I'm going to go ahead and give it a nine. The base set checklist, very very strong this year, guys. It is a great checklist. I'm going to go ahead and give that a nine as well. For the inserts and relics, I really wanted to give this a nine because they included a relic, but I do think that the other inserts, when we talk about like Freshman Flash and the fact that they didn't introduce a ton, I'm going to give it a little bit of a ding. So we're going to go for an eight there, still very strong overall. The parallels, the variations, 
a massive uh, parallel rainbow, tons of different variations that you can get in this set. So definitely a strong parallel and variation score. We're gonna go ahead and give that a nine. Our auto checklist, we're gonna give that a seven. Would have liked to have given it a little bit higher, but keep in mind, a lot of the autos are these rookie autos, which is what a lot of people are chasing. However, a lot of that kind of ends up being filler, but there are some monster autos you can pull out of here. Definitely some monster parallel autos. Um, and don't forget, you've got the relic autos as well. So overall, I'm gonna go ahead and give that a seven. Our pack odds and production, we're going to go down to four. This set does have some long-term value, even with the high production run. But at the end of the day, it is a high production run. So we're going to give that a four. The card quality, card quality on Topps Chrome is always awesome. Um, the cards hold up really, really well. Uh, a lot of them will score very high on a grading scale. Um, so definitely a good quality product. Not, not as thick as some of the higher end stuff. So we'll go ahead and give it an eight. The historical value on this. These cards have become more and more popular over the years and are starting to sell at, at or near the same price as a, as a lot of flagship cards, but they don't quite get there. So we'll go ahead and give that a seven and a half. The artistic value. I'm going to go ahead and give a seven. Um, you either love or hate the 2020 flagship design. I think it was designed for Chrome. So I'm going to go ahead and give that a seven. Um, and then the cost value overall. Look, if you can find some of this stuff in retail, um, it's going to be very cheap. It holds value. So it is a very good buy in retail. For hobby, it's a little bit inflated. Um, and so I go ahead and ding that a little bit, but I'm still going to give it a 7.5. And here's why. There are plenty of options of buying these cards on the secondary market as singles and one-offs. And these cards do hold value long-term. So once you have that initial rush of cards that come in and there's low quantities and people are looking for them, and you've got that dip that happens in the cards about one month, two months after the set is released, I think you're gonna be able to get a lot of these cards at a fairly reasonable price. And then if you hold them, they should hold value um, over time. So. What does that mean for our one cent sens sensational set rating? Well, we're gonna add all these up and we have a possible score out of 100. As you can see over to the left here, um, we'll, depending on the score, we'll give this rating a one to five star rating for the set. And Topps Chrome 2020 comes in with a final rating of 76. So it is a solid four star set for 2020. One of the stronger sets of 2020. I really, really like this year's set. Um, I am definitely a buyer on this set. I do think that even with the inflated prices, the demand for this set is going to be at an all-time high. They did a great job on this. Um, I don't think they've swung a miss quite like they did on Series 2. You've got all of your strong rookies in there. You've got a tons of on-card autos. You've got Hall of Fame autos. You've got relics. If you are into the baseball card hobby, this is a really, really hard set to give a to give a uh, bad score on. About the only thing that you can knock is the fact that it has a high production run. It's going to be a fun set to open, guys. Packs are going to be a fun to open. Boxes are going to be fun to open. Breaks are going to be fun to buy into. So, how does this set, Topps Chrome 2020, Right with all of the other sets, we are now at 32 sets. Actually, I think by this time we will be at 33 sets because Luminaries comes out. Um, so how does this rank in, out of all of those sets that have come out in 2020? Well, Topps Chrome for all of the sets I have reviewed, which is 32 out of the 33, Topps Chrome comes in as my second overall set with a score of 76. Bowman Baseball still leading the way with a sensational set ranking of 82. Tops Gypsy Queen falls to 74, and this will. Uh, and then you can see the rest of my top 10 on here. Tops Tribute fell out of the top 10 as Tops Chrome entered it. Uh, but I do think as we are now getting a little bit more mature into the. 2020 card season that we are now starting to see some sets kind of bubble up to the top um, tops 
and Bowman kind of own the top three spots, but Panini is holding strong with two spots in the fourth and fifth spot. But Tops is really kind of starting to bubble up as the brand for 2020s. You can see they own basically eight out of the top, uh, not basically, they own eight out of the top 10 spots on this sensational set ranking system. So you guys, Throw over to first, hit that like button if you like these set reviews. We do them all the time. If you like them, definitely subscribe to the channel, hit the notification so you can be the first one to figure out what teams you should be buying into and get all of the details for the set um, that is being released for the week. Um, comment below, let me know what you think about Topps Chrome. Let me know if you're buying into it, if you're gonna pass, if you're fed up with the inflation and with the inflated prices, or if you are all in and are gonna be ripping this stuff for all of August. I love to hear your guys' comments. I respond back to most, if not all of them. And um, with that, guys, I'm gonna sign off. I hope you enjoyed this set review. I hope you guys are having good luck on your personal pack rips and have a great time opening up Topps Chrome 2020. And in the meantime, go ahead, be good to your family, be good to your friends, and be good to your neighbors. And with that, I am signing off. We'll see you next time.